so I was a professional football player for 13 years. Um, between maybe 1994 right up to the late 2000s for different, different teams. First of all for Manchester United, then a team called Norwich City and Cardiff City. So I was very fortunate to have a, a, a wonderful career as a, as a footballer, uh, as many young men kind of aspire to, so it was always my dream. Um, and I suppose during the process of living out that dream, maybe later on in my 20s, I kind of started to feel as if, you know, there was a, a bit of a void there or a, an emptiness in the way I was living my life, maybe the way the football life, uh, the, the lifestyle around the game. I was growing more and more dissatisfied with the way I was living, the kind of my emphasis on like material things, putting all my trust in these things as if they were going to bring me happiness. And, um, and yet I still loved the game, I loved playing every day and I loved uh, playing football. But I kind of grew maybe more dissatisfied with the lifestyle and started to ask some deeper questions. And I was very fortunate I had a family member who was quite devout, my sister. And she would phone me or she would send me books on the Catholic faith. And, uh, and for a lot of years I wasn't really interested. And uh, only in my later 20s when I started to feel that kind of uh, sort of emptiness, I started to pick up these books and read them. And, and I found that there was something very much in them and the power of the words that, that, that affected a kind of change in me and a kind of a peace or so forth. There was a, a kind of Protestant pastor as well who kind of had written a kind of famous book called The Purpose Driven Life. And at this stage, you know, I just picked, I just picked it up and it had a very simple message. It was, you know, that, that irrespective of what you do in life, your job or your occupation, um, that ultimately at the, at the most fundamental level, God has created you for a purpose and, and your ad identity is not to be uh, sought only in what you do, it's who you are. And I very much needed to hear that message because my whole identity was caught up in the fact that I was a footballer. And outside of that I didn't really know who I was in a sense, that's, you know. And so the sense that God from all eternity had a purpose for me, not just to be a footballer, but to be to be something else, to be to be his child and, and, and to know and love him. So that was a kind of a very message that really hit me right away. And then later I obviously fell in love with my faith once again, reading lots of the church fathers and lots of the lives of the saints and things like that. I kind of couldn't stop reading all these different things. And so I went with that and I kind of explored the faith a little bit more. And I kind of made a radical decision in 2009 that I would come back to Ireland for maybe a year, take a year out of football and uh, to, always with the intention of going back, finishing my career and maybe becoming a manager afterwards. And um, it was really during that year that I discovered my vocation and, and my faith again on a regular basis. I started to go to Mass again, I started to pray the Rosary. I joined a group called the Legion of Mary in, in, in Ireland. And really there my faith became central again. And, uh, and it really, once that became such a focal point in my everyday life, I really couldn't go back to football uh, the way I had before. It was during that year I started to feel the stirrings of a religious vocation and uh, in 2009 I entered the seminary uh, to study for the priesthood and seven years later uh, here I am, I was ordained last week so that's a, sh a short version of a, a quite a long story. <laughs> you know the football world and watching football games and follow your team can make you very passionate and it appeals to the senses, you know you're in a crowd, you're, you get a sense of camaraderie with, with people who enjoy, who support the same team. So on the sense level you get, you get very passionate and, and but the faith is often very different, different and that's why it's maybe difficult for people. The faith needs us to be silent, to be people of prayer. It's not as kind of uh, euphoric as being in a football stadium or watching a game, but yet it speaks to us as a most deep, a deeper level and brings us a joy and a happiness that it's not just an hour and a half on a Saturday afternoon supporting your team with that high that it can give you and then often the low because they've lost or whatever you know <laughs> which is uh, which is obviously not good if you're bringing that home to your family life and, and all those different th kind of things but you know soccer is a gift it's a great gift it's how we use these things it's how we order them properly and um, I would say that you know to people you know for myself as well that if, the, if your faith is the foundation of all that you do, that it actually enhances everything else and gives you a greater joy to experience everything else because everything's ordered properly.